Hey, Songtown, I'm Clay Mills here with Marty Dotson. What's up? Marty, we were talking earlier and you mentioned, we get this all the time in Songtown with our members that email us and say, how can I write with X writer who's, you know, having lots of hits right now? You know, how do I get in the room with that writer or this writer? And in the business, we call that writing up, writing with someone who's a little higher on the ladder than you are. And so I have a lot of thoughts about that. And I just thought we'd hop on here and, and talk about it. I know you do too, because, yeah. you know, we get that a lot in Songtown. We get yeah. that a lot these days. Yes, we do. <laughs> you know, one of the things I always tell people when they say that too is if you're writing up, you're asking somebody else to write down. Whoa. And if you're, you know, so often they'll be telling me, I'm just tired of writing with people at my level or below. You know, I want to write up. And I'm like, they're probably tired of writing with people at their level or below. And and so you're asking them to do what you don't want to do, you know? And I think you and I have both seen most people succeed with their peer group. You know, um, Brad Paisley had a group of people around him that he knew in college and they all kind of rose together. Yeah. You know, um, I rose with the people that, that I started out with, you know, and, that's how it happens more often than not. You know, when I, when I got that first publishing deal, you know, I would ask my publisher, like, could you set me up with so-and-so, this big writer that you're writing with? And he was like, you haven't earned that yet. <laughs> you know, you, you might n not do well in that setting because you're not ready for that. Yeah. You know? What were well, you going to say? Well, you mentioned Brad Paisley. And so Brad and his friend that, he was writing a lot of songs with and having success with, they formed a publishing company. And years later, I'd had some hits and they asked me to write for their publishing company. So even though I had had hits, I never wrote once with Brad Paisley because he already had his crew of people that he worked with. And that's usually how it is. You know, people have their own writing camps and sometimes you can break into that. But even though I was writing at their company, I didn't break into that camp, you know. So I, I think you have to really realize that you, it's better to write with the people around you on your level and that you can rise up together, like you're saying, because it's just hard to break into any camp, even if you're on the same level um, as a, an artist or, or whoever it's hard to break into that camp if they've already got people they're comfortable working with. Yeah. doesn't have anything to do with you half the time. There's no waiting to find out the point of this video. We're just telling you right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> Stop I'm, trying to write up. Right in the very beginning. <laughs> well, you know, I think of it too, like, I think writing up is sort of like um, in tennis. If I were to play with Roger Federer, neither of us would have fun because I would not be able to hit any of his serves back. Right. <laughs> and it would be boring for him. It'd be frustrating for me. And, you know, there's been times in my career where I talked myself into some room that I wasn't quite ready for, and it, it blew up in my face a little bit. It was, it was not a good thing. And, you know, there was one time this um, turned out okay, but I, I was writing with Tom Shapiro, who became a dear friend and mentor. But at one point in the ride, he said, Marty, you know, I want a co-writer, not a cheerleader. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, all you've done all day is go, oh, that's great. I love that. And he said, it's great to, to get that affirmation, but I want to know what you're thinking. You know, he said, I, I brought you in here because I thought you had something to offer and I want to hear what it is, you know? And because I was intimidated about writing with him, I was, you know, my, the voices in my head were saying, well, don't say that. That's stupid. He yeah. won't like that. But he, he wanted to know, you know, what I had to offer. And if I wasn't willing to do that, he wasn't going to write with me again, you know? And so that situation, because of his kindness and his patience and from him being willing to confront me about it, we fixed that, you know, and I started participating and really working to be a collaborator with him as opposed to just telling him everything he did was great, you know, but that's, you've probably been in rights where that's happened. I have as well of like somebody, you know, maybe has a great title, but they're not really an experienced writer and I agree to write with them. 
and they don't really do anything or say anything in, right. in the right. And it's, it's not a great experience, you know? So I think you always have to be sure that you're ready for whatever, you know, whatever right you're trying to get into that, you know, so that you don't get in there and disappoint the person and then not ever get invited back. It can be a way to burn a bridge if you're not really careful. Yeah. And writing up, you know, I'm trying to think in Songtown, we've had members, Sarah Davis and the artist Gail, they met in Songtown. Neither one of them had anything going on. They were teenagers. They started writing together. They came up together. Um, a year ago, they had the biggest song in the world, A, B, C, D, E, F, U. And that happened because they wrote together and they were excited about the same things. They were on the same level. They liked the same kind of music. And they weren't out there going, well, if we could only pull in like a major hit writer to write with us and get this publisher that's going to go get our song cut or, you know, they didn't have anything going on. They just wrote together. And so I like to encourage people in Songtown and anyone out there listening, find the people around you. If you're in a small town, find the guy. If you're a songwriter, find the guy that's on stage at a local bar write songs with him. Um, there's a real power in that. There's a power of people working together on the same level for a common goal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's just a much more comfortable dynamic. Everybody's more comfortable to contribute. You know, they're, they're more comfortable to being vulnerable. You know, when I've written with monstrous hit writers, at times I was scared to death and I was self-conscious and there's a lot of stuff that was holding me back. But when I'm writing with Clay, I can just be free. I can say things, and we're we're probably going to write a better song than it, than if I was writing with Diane Warren, and I'm really nervous, you know, and worried. Are about you it. afraid to say? Sometimes writing, you're trying to, you have to say the stuff that's not very good to get to the good stuff. And if you're writing with someone that you're just in awe of, then it's like you're afraid to say that. You know, you're afraid to throw out the stupid lines to get to the good ones. So, right. yeah. And, and, and I think the world knows when you're ready for an opportunity, it will present itself. Yeah. You know, when, when you're ready, the door opens. So I think just writing with people on your level, improving your craft, and then those doors to bigger and better things open when they're supposed to. Yeah. But just chasing that right up all the time is just going to lead to to heartache a lot of times in awkward situations. Yeah. My first top 10 hit was While You Loved Me, and I wrote that with Danny Wells and Kim Williams. Kim was my publisher and had already been on 100 million records, had been ASCAP Writer of the Year, wound up being in the Hall of Fame. So people out there thought, yeah, Kim wrote that song, <laughs> you know. And But when I had Must Be Doing Something Right with Jason Matthews, that was the first big thing for either of us. And people were like, these guys must be pretty good. Awesome. All right, we want to thank Sweetwater. Back there, what you can't see behind the cameras is a lot of gear that Clay bought from Sweetwater. I've got a bunch of great people. Check them out. Check out the show notes for the links to Songtown and our books. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers.